Hello students, welcome to the lecture on introduction to tourism and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the definition and concept of tourism, understand the historical evolution and development, discuss the significance of tourism, explain domestic and international tourism, define types and forms of tourism. Let's start with the introduction of tourism. The word tourism, although accepted and recognized in common vernacular, is nevertheless a term that is subjected to a diversity of meanings and interpretations. For the students, this is a potential difficulty since consensus in the understanding of the term and hence the scope for investigation that such agreement open up is fundamental to any structure, form of inquiry and interpretation. Definitional problems arise partly because the word tourism is typically used as single term to designate a variety of concepts, partly because it is an area of student in a range of disciplines, geography, economics, business and marketing, sociology, anthropology, history and psychology and the different conceptual structures within these disciplines lead inevitability to contrast in perspective and emphasis. Just now discuss the definition and concept of tourism. We may, however, tease out some basic technical definitions of tourists and tourism as a starting point. Dictionaries, for example, commonly explain a tourist as a person undertaking a tour, a circular trip that is usually made for business pleasure or education at the end of which one returns to a starting point, normally the home. Tourism is habitually viewed as a composite concept involving not just the temporary movement of people to destinations that are removed from the normal place of residence, but in addition the organization and conduct of their activities and of the facilities and services that are necessary for meeting their needs. Simple statements of this character are actually quite effective in drawing attention to the core elements that distinguish tourism as an area of activity. They give primary two notification that tourism necessarily involves travel but the relocation of people is necessary one. They draw attention to the fact that activity of tourism requires an accessible supporting infrastructure of transport, accommodation, marketing systems, entertainment and attraction that together form the basis for the tourism industries. The spirit of these conceptions of the tourism is however implicit in the WTO definition on published in 1991. 
This is to a rather general view of tourism as the activities of a person traveling to a place outside his or her usual environment for less than a specific period of time and whose main purpose of travel is another than the exercise of an activity remunerated from within the place visited. Convergence in the experience of leisure, recreation and tourism is also reinforced by the manner in which tourism is increasingly permeating day-to-day -day leisure lifestyles. We read about tourism in newspapers or magazines and view television travel shows. We spend leisure time reviewing home videos or photo albums of previous trips and actively planning future ones and we import experiences or travels into our home lives. For example, by eating at foreign restaurants, practicing our winter sports at the local dry slope, visiting the leisure center to acquire an artificial dam before the Mediterranean holiday or by including foreign clothing styles within our wardrobe. The concept of tourism is not clearly defined and the definitions found in the literature are split between conceptual and technical definitions that originate from either the supply or demand side of tourism. The focus here is on the consumer that is, the individual tourist activities and therefore the definition of tourism used here takes its starting point in the demand side. Another common criterion used mainly in the statistical literature is the length of the travel. Day and weekend trips might in some cases be excluded. From an environmental perspective, however, people exploit the environment on shorter trips almost as much as they do on longer trips. Longer trips often only use more or slightly different resources that may have greater environmental impacts. All of these three mentioned purposes add to tourism's exploitation of the environment, but since holiday tourism is the largest and also requires the most resource, it is here that the conflicts between tourism and environment are most visible. The concept of modern tourism as we understand it today is relatively new, not more than 60 years old. Our world has become small. Every place on earth is now known and shown on the maps. No new America or India remains to be discovered. The barriers of distance have been broken in the last two centuries by the invention of steamships, railways, motor cars and the latest in the line airplanes. A man can now have breakfast in London, lunch in New York and dinner in Tokyo.
Now moving on to the next topic, we will discuss the historical evolution and development. 2000 years before Christ, in India and Mesopotamia, the travel for trade was an important feature since the beginning of civilization. The port at Lothal was an important center of the trade between the Indus Valley civilization and the Sumerian civilization. In 600 BC and thereafter, the earliest form of leisure tourism can be traced as far back as the Babylonian and Egyptian empires. A museum of historic antiques was opened to the public in Babylon. The Egyptians held many religious festivals that attracted the Devo and many people who thronged the cities to see famous works of arts and buildings. In India, the elsewhere kings travelled for empire building. The Brahmins and the common people travelled for religious purpose. Thousands of Brahmins and the common folk thronged Sarnath and Saraswati to be greeted by the inscrutable smile of the enlightened one, the Buddha. The Grand Tour from the early 17th century, a new form of tourism was developed as a direct outcome of the Renaissance. Under the reign of Elizabeth I, young men seeking positions to court were encouraged to travel to continent to finish their education. Later, it became customary for educational gentlemen to be completed by a grand tour accompanied by a tutor and lasting for three or more years. While ostensibly educational, the pleasure-seeking men travelled to enjoy life and culture of Paris, Venice or Florence. Tourism in the 20th century The First World War gave first-hand experience of countries and aroused a sense of curiosity about international travel among less well-off sector for the first time. The large scale of migration to the US meant a lot of travel across the Atlantic. Private motoring began to encourage domestic travel, Europe and the West. The seaside resort became annual family holiday destination in Britain and increased in popularity in other countries of the West. Hotels proliferated in these destinations. Let us now know the meaning of significance of tourism. The need to promote the value of an industry sector should be paramount in the strategic direction of any sustainable industry. Tourism is no different. It is important that the industry focuses on social and environmental as well as economic benefits of tourism. This is not to suggest that economic considerations are mutually exclusive from those of social cohesion and the environment. In fact, sustainable economic returns can only be achieved through factoring in strategies that take all three elements into account. The emphasis on tourism will increase due to the continuing economic shift from traditional to service-based industries, greater focus caused by terrorism and airline crisis in 2001 that highlighted the depth of tourism, influence on economies and communities, concentration on industries with capacity to increase export earnings. Tourism being one of the few established industry sectors projected to maintain significant growth over a long period. The 10th plan approach toward tourism signifies a distinct shift from the approach adopted in earlier plans. Apart from acknowledging the well-accepted advantages of developing tourism from the promotion of natural integration, international understanding and earning foreign exchange, the 10th plan recognizes the vast employment generating potential of tourism and the role it can play in furthering the socio-economic objectives of the plan. Global Status and Trends Although global recession and the September 11, 2001 events are estimated to have resulted in a temporary decline in travel and tourism, demand in 2001 and 2002, international and domestic tourism is expected to boom over the next two decades. The World Travel and Tourism Council WTTC estimates a 4.5% per annum increase in the total amount of travel and tourism economic activity between 2002 and 2012. This is largely attributed to a rise in global wealth, liberalization of international airspace, cheaper flights, and the use of internet as a travel tool. Global market trends, consumer trends, and tourism are gradually changing and require an appropriate response in terms of both policy, formulation, and investment. Current market trends indicate that long-haul travel will grow faster than intra-regional travel. A growth of 20% is expected by 2020. People with less time for leisure are likely to take more frequent but shorter trips nearer home, opening up opportunities for neighboring country tourism. The experienced traveler wants authentic off-the-beaten track vacations in remote and less well-known places as against luxurious five-star vacations, leading to an interest in rural and ethnic tourism. India's place in world tourism. 
the World Tourism Organization forecast indicates an increasing tourism preference towards East Asia, the Pacific West Asia and South Asia, although Europe and America still remain the world's foremost tourism destinations, commanding 77% of the global market. East Asia Pacific achieved the highest rate of growth of 14.5% in the tourism and travel in 2000 followed by West Asia and South Asia. With this gradual shift in focus, the outlook for the growth of tourism in the region is promising. In Asia, China has emerged as a leading tourist destination and is poised to become the world's top tourist destination by 2020. India's Tourist Profile India receives the largest number of overseas tourists from the United Kingdom, which is its largest source market, followed by the United States, Sri Lanka, France, Germany, Canada, Japan, Australia and Singapore. Of the tourists coming to India, 27.5% are in the age group there is a lack of world-class destinations within the country and partially because the domestic tourism policy has been largely directed towards those in the lower end of the spending spectrum. The highest spender from India prefers to visit neighbouring countries as he gets better value for money. There are three main types of tourism that you need to know about. They are domestic tourism, outbound tourism and inbound tourism. Domestic tourism involves taking holidays and trips in your own country. So let's say for example there was a farmer living down here in Sussex. And one day he decided to go on holiday in his tractor to Cornwall. He travels down the coast and he has a lovely holiday in Cornwall. Now in Cornwall he is a domestic tourist because he's from the same country. He lives in England and he's travelled to a different place in England go on holiday. He is a domestic tourist. Even if he just goes for a day trip, let's say he goes for a day trip to London, he would still be a domestic tourist because he's taking a holiday or a trip in his own country. So that is domestic tourism. You take a holiday or a trip in your own country. Okay. Now let's say that the farmer decides he wants to go to a different country. And he gets on a plane and he goes out of the country to a different country. Let's say he goes out of the country. Then he is an outbound tourist. He's travelled to a different country for a trip or a visit. He is an outbound tourist. Now let's imagine that we're invaded by zombies. And these particular zombies, they travel by plane to the UK. They come from Zombieland and they come by plane. Here they come into the UK. And they are, well they would be inbound tourists. Because inbound tourists are visitors from overseas who come into the country. So this is guys a visitor from Zombieland. He's come into the country. Arr, 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 arr. And he is an inbound tourist. So I'm going to go through those three different types of tourism one more time. The three different types. Domestic, outbound and inbound. Domestic is when you travel, take a holiday or a trip in your own country. So the farmer going to Cornwall from Sussex or going to London is an example of domestic tourism. Because he stayed in his own country but still taking a holiday or a trip. Outbound tourism is when you travel to a different country for a holiday or a trip. So if he flies off, even to Ireland or further away to the USA, he is an outbound tourist because he's going out of the country. Okay. Now inbound tourists are visitors from overseas who come into the country. That's why they're called inbound tourists. Whee! So those are the three types of tourism you need to know about. Domestic, outbound and inbound. Hope you've got all that. If you're not sure, you can always play the film again. 
Tourism in India is the largest service industry with a contribution of 6.23% to the national GDP and 8.78% of the total employment in India. India witnesses more than 5 million annual foreign tourist arrivals and 562 million domestic tourism visits. The tourism industry in India generated about 100 million US dollars in 2008 and that is expected to increase by 275.500 million US dollars by 2018 at a 9.4% annual growth rate. In the year 2009, 5.11 million foreign tourists visited India. Majority of foreign tourists came from USA and UK. Rajasthan, land of kings, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Delhi and Uttar Pradesh were the top four states to receive inbound tourists. Domestic tourism in the same years was massive at 650 million. Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Tamil Nadu received the big share of these visitors. Ministry of Tourism is the nodal agency to formulate national policies and program for the development and promotion of tourism. In the process, the ministry consults and collaborates with the other stakeholders in the sector including various central ministry agencies, the state of government, union territories and the representatives of the private sector. Concerted efforts are being made to promote new forms of tourism such as rural, cruise, medical and eco-tourism. The Ministry of Tourism is the nodal agency for the development and promotion of tourism in India and maintains the Incredible India campaign. Tourism by state, these are some Indian tourism states defined, Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh has a rich cultural heritage and a variety of tourist attraction. The state of Andhra Pradesh comprises scenic hills, forests, beaches and temples. Also known as the city of Nizams and the city of Pearls, Hyderabad is today one of the most developed cities in the country and a modern hub of information technology, ITES and biotechnology. Arunachal Pradesh Arunachal Pradesh attracts tourists from many parts of the world. Tourist attractions include Tawang, a beautiful town famous for its Buddhist monastery, Zero, famous for cultural festivals, the Nampara Tiger Project in Changlang district and Sela Lake near Bomdila with its bamboo bridges overhanging the river. Religious places of interest include Malinthan in Lekha Bali, Rukmini Nagar near Rowing, the place where Rukmini Lord Krishna's wife in Hindu mythology is said to have lived, and Pashuram Kund in Lohit district which is believed to be the lake where Pashuram washed away his sins. Rafting and trekking are common activities. Assam Assam is the central state in the northeast region of India and serves as the gateway to the rest of the seven sister states. Assam boasts of famous wildlife preserves, the Kaziranga National Park, which is home to the great Indian one-horned rhinosaurus, and the Manas National Park and Povitura Wildlife Sanctuary. These first two parks were UNESCO World Heritage Site, the largest river island, Majuli Historic Sivasagar, famous for the ancient monuments of Ahom Kingdom, the city of eternal romance. Tezpur and tea estates dating back to time of British Taj. The weather is mostly subtropical. Assam experiences the Indian monsoon and has one of the highest forest densities in India. The winter months, October end half to first half of April, are the best time to visit. Bihar. Bihar is one of the oldest continuously inhabited places in the world with history of 3000 years. The rich culture and heritage of Bihar is evident from the innumerable ancient monuments that are dotted all over the state in eastern India. This is the place of Aryabhata, Great Ashoka, Chanakya and many other great historical figures. Delhi Delhi is the capital of India, a fine blend of an old and new ancient and modern. Delhi is a melting pot of cultures and religions. Delhi has been the capital of numerous empires that ruled India making it rich in history. The rulers left behind their trademark architectural styles. Delhi currently has many renowned historic monuments and landmarks such as the Tukhlakbad Fort, Qutub Minar, Purana Kila, Lodi Garden, Jama Masjid, Humayun's Tomb, Red Fort and Sardajung's Tomb. Modern monuments include Jantar Mantar, India Gate, Rashtrapati Bhavan, Lakshmi Narayan Temple, Lotus Temple and Akshadham Temple. Goa Goa is one of the most famous tourist destinations in India. A former colony of Portugal, Goa is famous for its excellent beaches, Portuguese churches, Hindu temples and wildlife centuries. A basilica of Bomb Jesus, Mengushi Temple, Dudhasagar Falls and Shanta Durga are famous attractions in Goa. Recently, a wax museum, Wax World, has also opened in Old Goa, housing a number of wax personalities of Indian history, culture and heritage. Jammu and Kashmir Jammu and Kashmir is the northernmost state of India. Jammu is noted for its scenic landscape, ancient temples, Hindu shrines, castles, gardens and forts. The Hindu holy shrines of Amarnath in Kashmir Valley attracts about 4 million Hindu devotees every year. 
Vaishnav Devi also attracts thousands of Hindu devotees everywhere. Jammu's historic monuments features a unique blend of Islamic and Hindu architecture styles. International tourism, an all-over definition of the term visitor, which for statistical purpose describes as any person visiting a country other than that in which he has his usual place of residence for any reasons other than falling occupation remunerated from within the country visited. Anybody who travels has a motive of his or her own. Agri-tourism, archaeological tourism, atomic tourism, benefit tourism. Agri-tourism. Agri-tourism is a style of vacation in which hospitality is offered on farms. This may include the opportunity to assist with farming tasks during the visit. Agri-tourism is often practiced in wine-growing regions as in Italy, France and Spain. Recreational travel. The first and foremost is recreation travel. The purpose in this case is recreational holiday or leisure. People want to get away from the monotonous of everyday life and move to the beaches, mountains and the scenic countryside. It has been estimated that 75% of the international travel in the world and 50% of the domestic travel is recreational. According to the Indian government survey done in 1999, 75% of foreign visitors come to India for recreation or holiday and the remaining 25% come for business, official visit, other purpose. Conference and Convention Tourism In recent years, two new but very important categories of tourism have emerged convention and conference tourism. A large number of people are now traveling within their own country or abroad to attend conventions or conferences relating to their businesses. The purpose is to gain knowledge through other people's experiences. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Tourism is habitually viewed as a composite concept involving not just the temporary movement of people to destinations that are removed from their normal place of residence, but in addition, the organization and conduct of their activities and of the facilities and services that are necessary for meeting their needs. The International Union of Tourism Organization IUO2O, which saw tourists as any person visiting a country region place another than that in which he or she has their usual place of residence, necessarily places an emphasis upon overnight slops as a defining feature of tourism. Thousands of Brahmins and the common folk throng Sarnath and Saraswati to be greeted by the inscrutable smile of the enlightened one, the Buddha. It is important that the industry focuses on social and environmental as well as economic benefits of tourism. The WTTC has identified India as one of the world's foremost tourism growth centre in the coming decade. India receives the largest number of overseas tourists from United Kingdom, which is the largest source market, followed by the United States, Sri Lanka, France, Germany, Canada, Japan, Australia and Singapore. Tourism in India is the largest service industry, with a contribution of 6.23% to the national. Ministry of Tourism in the Nodal Agency to formulate national policies and programs for the development and promotion of tourism.